Welcome to worship on Christmas. Whether you are joining us on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or both, we are glad that you are here and are joining us for worship today. This is a season of joy. This year is a little different than other years, and so we ask and pray for God's blessing on each of you as you join us for worship today. Merry Christmas, children of God. I'm so glad you joined us for worship today, Christmas Eve. It's time for us to light that Christ candle, the center of our Advent wreath. I'm hoping, since I can't see it, that I can light it. This candle signifies the life of Jesus coming into our world, the light that will never go out, Jesus, the Christ candle among the peace, joy, hope, and love that we've been sharing all through Advent. We've been preparing space for Jesus to enter our lives. And now it's time to celebrate. 
the birth of the baby that will change everything, that will show us how to bring peace, joy, hope, and love to everyone. I hope you're enjoying this Christmas holiday. It is certainly like no other Christmas we've had. So remember to share love and to share Christ's light with all of those that you gather with or have to talk to on the phone or through FaceTime or through Zoom. Because we're apart doesn't mean we can't share love with each other and hope for a better future and joy about how we are loved by God and the peace in our hearts. It's Christmas, Merry Christmas. And it's time to change our story walk. So if you haven't seen our story walk that's out on the north end of the building, a new one will be out tomorrow about the 12 days of Christmas because the 12 days of Christmas start now <laughs> and they go until January 6th. And if you come and you go through our story walk, you'll be reminded of why. Merry Christmas, children of God. May God bless you and keep you. Will you pray with me? Merry Christmas, God. Thank you for sending Jesus to live with us and walk with us, to cry with us and mourn with us. Help us to remember to show peace, joy, hope, and love to all of your children. Amen. Merry Christmas.
Join me in the Christmas litany. Come, Lord Jesus, startle us with your presence, life sustaining as air to open our hearts to praise you, to open our minds to attend to you, to open our spirits to worship you, to open us to live our lives as authentically and boldly as you lived yours. Come, Lord Jesus, be with us in our longing. Come stay with us in our needing. Come go with us in our doing. Come struggle with us in our searching. Come rejoice with us in our loving. Amen. first reading is from Isaiah. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second reading is from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Our gospel for this Christmas celebration is the traditional Christmas story from Luke. And what I'd like you to do today is I would like you to sit back in a comfortable way Close your eyes and simply listen to the story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. They all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you great good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come to set your people free. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come. 
Amen. It was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, and it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. Some of you will recognize Charles Dickens. Mostly at this time of the year we read the Christmas Carol, right? This is from the tale of two cities. It's how the story begins. But for me this year in thinking about Christmas, it truly is the best of times and it is the worst of times. It is the time of foolishness and the time of wisdom. I've been thinking a lot these last few weeks about Christmas's past. You know, I grew up in a pastor's family, so Christmas and Easter and the big holidays of the church are, oh, we celebrate them a bit different than most people. Christmas Eve was always our time in our household. It was just my mom and my dad and my brother and sister and myself. And we had this whole quiet ritual routine. Christmas morning, all havoc broke out because that was when church was. But Christmas Eve was a quiet time in our house, a time just for us to be together as family. This year's different, isn't it? Those traditions that many of us long for, we simply cannot do. Life has changed. It is the best of times. It is the worst of times. We are discovering who we are and whose we are in the midst of all of this. Every year as a pastor, and now this is my 20th, probably my 21st Christmas as a pastor, I, um, I think about, okay, so what's my favorite character in the Christmas story this year? This year, Joseph is the one that I have been drawn to. I mean, some years it's been the donkey, and some years it's been the shepherds, and some years Mary. This year, it's Joseph. I think in Joseph's life, if he could write it down, he would say, it is the best of times, it is the worst of times. It is the time of foolishness, it is the time of wisdom. I think Joseph had a hard, hard call by God. He had a call to walk alongside this woman who was pregnant, who was to be his wife, and he kind of swallowed deeply and said, okay, I will do this. And then they find themselves going across the desert Mary on a donkey, very heavily pregnant with child. And when they get where they're supposed to go, there's no place for them to stay. So they stay in a manger, in a stable. 
the baby comes. And one of my favorite depictions of this scene are Mary and Joseph absolutely exhausted, holding this baby and sleeping. I think that's what it would have been like for them. Not all the angels we see above or the shepherds around or the little drummer boy in the corner. I think it was the best of times and the worst of times for them. And it may be for some of you too. Some of you are mourning the loss of loved ones. Some of you are celebrating the fact that you actually are Zooming for a family meal once a week with people you don't see very often, and all of a sudden there's a stronger connection. Some of you feel really lonely and isolated. Some of you have to go to work because we need you to work. And for some of you, you have discovered new friends, new patterns of being, game night with the family, cooking, baking bread. You've discovered a new sense of normal. I don't think we know who we will be when this is all over, but we know who we are right now. And we know whose we are right now, even in the best of times and even in the worst of times. Our God comes, Emmanuel, God with us, breaking in. And isn't it a sense of God's irony that in the midst of all the upheaval in the world and in our personal lives, this is the year the Bethlehem star shows up. Now, we here in southern Wisconsin couldn't see it when it showed up Monday night because we were in the clouds. But there's that star that shows up every 800 years or so, this year when we need the light so badly in the midst of darkness. The star that reminds us, yeah, we are part of a bigger universe. We are part of something really big. We are part of God's story, an important part of God's story. You and me. So that even in the midst of the best of times and the worst of times, we know this God comes, always coming towards us, opening up and welcoming us in, however we might be in that moment. A friend of mine shared this week quote from the National Geographic about this pandemic. And I think this sums it up for me this year. The real meaning to be gained from it is we are all vulnerable and we are all connected. We are in this together globally. Love and caring are bigger than anything, especially suffering even when we are lonely or hollow, heartbroken or angry. We can slip through these gaps into what we have always longed for, presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, not presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E that is what will sustain us. And we will be there for others until we can come together. So this Christmas, my prayer for all of us is this, that even in the midst of the best of times and in, the best, and in those worst of times, 
We are here for each other. Always. Connected, vulnerable, holding on to each other as our God holds on to us all together. It is the best of times in the midst of worst of times because God is there always, always, breaking in with light. Amen. As I say petitions tonight, I invite you to pray your own prayer, either out loud or silently in the quiet of your heart. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you that you make every day new. Especially, we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation for the new creation in Christ in all gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationships with others, and for your church on earth. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, 
Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus. Today we especially pray for those who govern the nations of the world, for people in countries ravaged by warfare, violence, or terrorism, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the Church of Christ in every land. Almighty and everlasting God, you bring us to each day, to each new day, whether it is the best of times or the worst of times. We ask you to preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you to find some bread or crackers, grape juice or wine, so you too can take part in the gift of this meal. The night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you take the bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take your wine or your juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. It's time to light our candles in our tradition of being part of a Christmas Eve service. So I invite you to find a candle. I have the candles that we will be celebrating with outside with me. As you are lighting their, your candles, listen to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light 
the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may extinguish your candles and get ready to join in loud voice in your own place. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven nature Thank you.